Hey guys, C2A here. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little different to some of my other content. Also, at the time of recording, I'm going to be moving to Glasgow at the weekend, so this will be the last time you see me make a video in this room. I've been wanting to do some vlog-style content for a while now, but I hadn't quite figured out what to talk about. But today, instead of coming up with something new and fresh to discuss, I'm going to talk about something I've already discussed on other platforms. I want to talk to you guys about this concept of making it or what I think you have to do in 2019 as a musician to have a shot of having a career in the music industry. I've talked about this a bit in interviews I've done, most recently on Ola England's YouTube channel back in August when I was on tour with Intervals and the Omnific. With Seafood Eye. <laughs> So what I want to do is expand on what I've said already and get all my thoughts on the topic in the one video. Keep in mind that this is just one person's perspective based on my own experiences in the music industry, speaking to other people who also work in the industry, and also just getting my music out there in the wild. Speaking of getting your music out there, this video is sponsored by DistroKid. DistroKid is a service that musicians can use to get their music onto online stores and streaming platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon Music, and many, many more. DistroKid does and charge commission, meaning that you keep 100% of your music royalties. And what sets them apart is that instead of charging you on a per release, per year basis, they charge you a flat yearly fee regardless of how many releases you upload, starting from as low as $19.99 a year. I recently switched over to DistroKid and with so many releases in my back catalogue, it makes so much more sense for me to pay a flat yearly fee as opposed to paying per release per year. DistroKid also offers different tiers of deal for people who release under or manage several artists. And they also have tools to manage automatic payout splits for people in bands or to manage songwriting royalties. Use the VIP link shown at the bottom of your screen or in the video description to get 7% off your first year's membership. So now that you know to use DistroKid to get your music online, let's move on to the rest of the video, shall we? The first thing I think is super important when it comes to creating music, and this might be my boomer side showing through, is being creatively honest and being true to yourself. Is the music that you're making truly reflective of the music you want to make or are working towards making? If the answer is yes, I believe, at least, you're heading in the right direction. If the answer is no, then try to figure out why that is. Are you chasing a trend? Are you trying to emulate a band you're fond of too closely? Or have you just not found what music you truly want to make just yet? Figuring that out will be the first step in setting yourself up straight creatively, so to speak. That's not to say that once you figure out what music you want to make, you'll be able to do it straight away, because that's something you'll always have to work towards, leading to my next point. The reality is that you'll have to make an investment of both time and money if you seriously want to pursue a career in music. There are obvious levels of time and money investment that you'll have to make, such as practicing or buying gear, but there are also less obvious trade-offs that you'll have to decide on for yourself. An example is whether you want to invest the time into learning how to mix and record your own music, something which took me many years of gradual work and improvement. The alternative is whether you'd rather pay somebody to do that work for you. There is no right answer. It depends on your needs and circumstances. Personally, I always tend towards investing time because I want to have full control over the thing so I can do it my way and on my terms. However, everybody is different and there may be different opinions within the same band on how to approach something. The trick is to find the balance that works for you or your band. You probably heard the saying, it's about who you know, and that definitely rings true in the music industry. It doesn't just have to be a cynical hot take though. First things first, if you think you can work in the industry without networking or dealing with other people who also work in the industry, then you have another thing coming. Almost anything you'd want to do in the music industry, be it release or record music, play a show or get an endorsement deal, requires interaction with either an individual or a company that provides that service for you. You'd best be ready to have those interactions and build relationships where necessary. As an example, a lot of people see gear companies as faceless entities, whereas in reality, you'll actually have to have a working relationship with an artist rep that will deal with your day-to-day -day with the company. Quite often, your relationship with that individual could define your relationship with the brand as a whole. Not to say that everything has to be strictly business, however. I believe that the people that I work with, such as my booking agent or the various reps from the brands that I work with, are good, honest, hardworking individuals that I would genuinely like to spend time with. Just be ready to talk business when required and understand your expectations of them and their expectations of you. There's also the other side of the equation when it comes to networking with other artists. My advice, make friends with as many people as you can. There's no need to antagonize other bands and artists because they're just other people trying to do the same thing that you're trying to do as well. And if you make friends and get on good terms with other artists, you may be able to provide each other opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily have on your own. Also, it's just good to have more friends, right? 
Social media. These are two words that we all kind of hate to see, but we all realize that it's a necessity to run any kind of business in 2019. I'm probably not the best person to give advice on social media, given my tendency to not post that much, as well as there being other individuals who know the algorithms and the trends to fully game the system. All I will say is that when you post on social media, you're representing yourself and your brand as a musician. The two things that work for me personally are honesty in how I present myself and a willingness to communicate back. It hopefully lets people see that I'm just another person just trying to make my way through life just like everybody else. Final point, have fun. This might seem like a moot point, but I feel like I have to remind people of this often. Admittedly, making music is difficult, learning instruments can be a challenge, and writer's block can sometimes feel insurmountable. This feeling is probably relatable to all musicians and Dark Souls players the world over. But in my optimistic and quite possibly naive outlook on Dark Souls, when somebody tells you to get good, don't necessarily take it as an edgy meme lord trying to tilt you off the face of the planet. Instead, take it as a sign to pick yourself off the ground, dust yourself off, and throw yourself headlong at that challenge again. Because what better feeling is there when you finally play that lick, when you nail that mix, or when you finally finish writing that song? Be prepared to fail, be prepared to make mistakes, because nobody working in the music industry didn't go through the same things that you're going through right now. Remember that the reason that we all want to work in the music industry in the first place is our shared passion and love for music and the joy we all share when creating and listening to it. Anyway, that's all I have to say for today. Let me know if you want to see more vlog style videos and if you do, what kind of content you want me to cover in the comments below. As always, there are links to my Patreon and my Discord server in the description below. A huge thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. Really appreciate what you do for me. Finally, a huge thanks to DistroKid again for sponsoring this video. In the description, you can find the VIP link to get 7% off your first year's membership. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.